Let's talk to physical construction of these sets and how to disassemble them. This one's already partially disassembled so we can get through this quickly. The backs are made out of masonite. They are held on by sheet metal screws with captive washers, assuming you have the originals. They're all quarter inch, as are most of the fasteners in this set. Get yourself a quarter inch nut driver, save yourself a lot of time. I've already taken the back off as I said. If your set is missing the back, reproductions are available. They're laser cut out of masonite. They did a beautiful job. They run around $80 to $100 depending on the color. Yes, they do charge more for different colors. I think because it's more involved with the screen printing and, and whatnot. Again, I'll have a link. If you are missing these uh, or some of those fasteners, these will work out just fine. Number six, three-eighths of an inch, sheet metal screws, hex head, slotted. They have a bit of a flange around the top, but if you want some added protection, because if you tighten those down too much, they will crush the masonite, throw on some washers, also number six. The fasteners that hold the chassis in place are a little bit beefier. If you have the original fasteners, they're a 5 16 inch head. If you need to replace them, uh, it seems a number two sheet, or sorry, number 10 sheet metal screw, 5 eighths of an inch, will do the job nicely. Now, to take these off, you want to start out with the control cluster over here, held in by two quarter inch sheet metal screws. Just kind of loosen that and let it dangle. Unplug the tuner. There are several cables coming down from the CRT. One for the yoke plugs in here, one for the CRT base, the filament, the cathode, the grid plugs in here. Unplug both of those, put them to the side, but you're not done yet. You're going to need to reach in here or undo the, the chassis fasteners and you can pull this out a little bit. Don't go crazy because if you do, you can yank out some of the connectors, connections and damage them. There are more things that you need to get at that are hard to get at when it's all pushed in. One is there is a lone wire coming down from the CRT for the video signal. It runs and plugs into about the middle of this main board. You're going to have to reach in there and pop it out. It's plugged into one of those vertical stakes on the circuit board. Two, the speaker. There are two wires coming down from the speaker to plug into the audio output transformer. It's in front of the horizontal output tube, all the way at the front of the chassis. You're going to have to reach in there and yank those two wires out. That'll let you pull this out a little bit further. You're going to have to then unplug the high voltage wire for the CRT. If the set has been powered up, you're going to want to discharge it. Now I'm assuming, of course, when you powered up your set, it produced some high voltage. If it didn't, you have nothing to worry about. If it did, you're going to want to discharge it before you pull that cable out. To do so, it plugs in to the base of this high voltage rectifier tube socket right next to one of the pins on that tube. To discharge it, take a screwdriver and get it down in there and let the other end of it go up against some metal surface like the, this lid. If there is some high voltage present you'll hear a spark. Do it several times. It's a weird property of the pitcher tube capacitor that forms, uh, they call it dielectric absorption. Um, you can discharge it, a minute later you get shocked by it. It kind of it takes a few cycles to completely bleed away all the charge. Well, once you do, you reach in there and pull out the red wire. It looks like this. It's the largest, fattest wire. It has a connector on the end. It's just look kind of like a tube pin on an octal tube and that plugs into that base. You're going to pull it out and there's a hole in the back of this high voltage box and it goes out that way. Here is what the speaker wires look like. So, recapping. 
undo the control cluster. Unplug the tuner. You've got power for the tuner. You've also got a video cable for the uh, IF. It's, it looks like an RCA jack. Unplug the yoke. Unplug the CRT socket. Pull out the video wire. Which looks like this. Speaker wires. Now you still won't be able to completely pull it out. because We're not done yet. We're almost done. The very last thing is the power switch volume control. It's up in front on the, on the far end next to the speaker. It's hardwired into the chassis. You're going to have to get up in there and undo two nuts. They are around 5 sixteenths, maybe slightly larger. Get yourself a nut driver or a... Um, a ratchet with an extension on it because it's pretty deep in there and you have to take those two nuts off and, and of course pop the knobs off the control and then you can finally get that out. That will allow you to finally pull the whole chassis out. cables again. There's your video wire. There's your high voltage wire. There's your speaker connector. There's your CRT connector. There's your yoke connector. And we have our tuner over here. If you really want to clean the entire cabinet, hose it down, wash it down, remove corrosion, you're going to have to remove a masonite fiber board up front. That is not fun. There are a dozen or more nuts holding that on. You have to take them all off. They are kind of 5 sixteenths. Um, I've had trouble figuring out exactly what size is. I think it's because they didn't use proper nuts. They're made out of sort of stamped sheet metal. They're cheap. And I don't think the uh, dimensions are exactly right but it's in the ballpark of 5 sixteenths. I have to take a whole bunch of those off and the whole front comes off including the speaker. Remove the tuner. Uh, screws from below on some models are quarter inch and some they're 5 sixteenths which leaves the pitcher tube. Now this is the most recognizable feature of these sets. The pitcher tube sits outside the cabinet and it swivels. The only thing holding this to the cabinet is one screw. We need to take that out in order to take the pitcher tube out. Sometimes over time, maybe from a little abuse, this plastic shroud will have shifted down. Sometimes the front of it gets bent back like this and then if you're going to take this screw out it's going to smack right into it. Usually by applying some upward pressure like on this set, see it's pretty loose. I'm going to push it up so I can get that screw out. The end of that screw locks into a groove in the uh, collar underneath here. It doesn't really physically hold it down all that strongly, it's, uh, but it does prevent it from completely coming out. So when you ship these, uh, these heads wobble, um, and then of course it swivels. If at all possible, remove the CRT head. Unplug these cables, pull the whole thing out, lay it down on some soft towels for, for shipping. Otherwise, reinforce this so it's not just bopping around so much. One nice way to do it is to stuff some towels around the bottom. Or foam, what have you. Wedge some foam in there. Wedge a towel in there so it's not unsupported and just vibrating and flopping around. Okay, I want to pull this out because I want to clean it and I'm almost done rebuilding the chassis and I want to power this up on the workbench. 
it's a lot easier in spite of it being a hassle to pull this out it's a lot easier when you're working on these sets to pull this off so you can lay it down on your workbench and plug it into the chassis otherwise you have to put the chassis back in and do the opposite of everything we just talked about just to try powering it up again these cables are not really long enough yeah back in the day in their promotional literature they say oh yeah there's the cables long enough you can just pull this out and service it nah, you can get at the tubes to replace them you can't really get it all the circuitry to work on it they're just not that long so we're going to pull this out now we have a whole bunch of cables here and we have a small hole through the top of the cabinet that they go through don't just yank this thing up some of these wires are going to get hung up you can rip the a socket right off the end of one of these wires or damage the wiring. The old insulation can get very brittle. Some of these are uh, sort of waxed paper kind of coated and some of them like the high voltage wire and two of the yoke wires are plastic. That plastic can get really brittle over time. These are fairly pliable. They're in good shape. The, th the worst thing I've seen happen and I've done it myself is uh, you start lifting this up and everything seems great the cables are going through and then the edge of one of these connectors gets hung up on it and you got some velocity some momentum built up and get ripped right off the end take it easy it's a little bit heavy uh, 15 pounds maybe let's see i'm getting hung up already if you have a friend that helps otherwise just kind of brace it on your shoulder so you can get one hand free to guide the cables or take all your cables, take all the loose ends, stick them inside a plastic bag and wrap it up with some tape and make a small bundle that'll fit through this hole so that things won't get hung up. I'll just the speaker wires out with me. Okay, and there it is. We'll put that aside for safety. Okay, what are we left with? A dirty cabinet so what can we do about it well again as I mentioned I can't just submerge this in a bathtub or hose it down outside because we've got fibrous material here we have a speaker we have a tube chart don't want to destroy all that stuff and you can take off all these nuts and take the whole front board off and speaker it takes care of that tube chart I believe the TV restorer guy does have reproductions available if you don't mind trashing the original you can uh, apply a new reproduction and of course the tuner pull the knobs off take out the three um, screws from below it's easy enough to remove uh, we do have or you may have an antenna you may not have an antenna if you do uh, two Phillips screws remove those take the whole assembly out and there's a collar and if you were watching closely you may have seen this fall out of the CRT neck This seemingly useless piece of paper is actually fairly important to the set if you want to get optimal picture quality. It's supposed to go into this hole here and keep this video wire away from the others. I've seen some where all of these cables are going through the cardboard, and I think that's the way it's supposed to be. But often I see it where it's just wedged in like so and that's why it fell out I think these are all supposed to be through that well, uh, and you can do that fairly easily because this, this comes apart like so and then I can wrap it around these cables and then put it down in there again I believe it was TV restorer guy who took the time to uh, unfold one of these and get the dimensions and make a cutting pattern for it I will try to dig that up and include it along with this presentation. Why do you want to do that? To get the cleanest possible video signal going up into the CRT. You've got um, large voltages and currents on some of these wires, uh, especially the ones going to the yoke. You don't want that to feed through into the video. Now here's a look at that collar. I believe it is cast and then machined aluminum. And it is lubed up and it's pretty dirty looking, but 
I will caution you a bit before you just go in there and grab some brake cleaner or lacquer thinner and clear all that off. And that is, the lubrication that's there is really thick. And that helps make a nice smooth gliding action when you rotate the CRT head. Uh, another set I've restored before, I removed all this and then applied some grease like this stuff here, which is pretty thin, and the action just did not feel very nice. It moved far too easily, so I had to dig up some thick grease to put on there. So it's something to be uh, aware of. I mean, yeah, sure, you want to clean out the dirt and debris, because if you don't, it will uh, wear down the metal and make the... Um, the fit looser that screw that we took out it goes into this groove see what I mean about it? it's not exactly holding it in place and there is a bit of play there so it's not it's there to keep it from completely falling out but it does not hold it in very securely if you want to remove this there are four screws you can take out from below and the whole thing comes out which you may want to do if you want to of course repaint this or even just clean it so this one is in pretty darn good condition as far as the original paint goes, so I wouldn't dream of stripping this or repainting it. What I typically do is I treat it like a car. It's painted steel. It's, it's so use automobile cleaning products on it. Uh, first I'll, I'll clean it with a mild uh, dish detergent, and then uh, typically I go over with something like Scratch Out or various other uh, autom automotive uh, scratch removers. And uh, after that, I'll clean it well and then use car wax on it. Be careful in some areas like here where we have, and they're kind of worn out already, a horizontal, vertical, and brightness. It's labeling the three kind of thumb wheel controls over here. And then this being a debutante um, hotel motel set, it has these instructions here, as many of them did. Of course, we want to preserve that. It's part of the history of the set. It's kind of neat. Background music on channel number seven, and then there's instructions on how to operate the set. Here is a look at the bottom of the cabinet, and what I want to talk about are the feet. The feet are made out of hard plastic, and they are riveted in place, and it's fairly common for these to get damaged or be missing altogether, and that's what happened to this at some point, because that is the remains of a foot. Same here. There's a little bit of plastic and then there's the rivet holding it in place. Somebody at some point replaced them by, rather than trying to get that rivet out, which is challenging, they uh, drilled a hole and uh, put a screw in there and it's, it's fairly loose. <laughs> uh, but at least it's pretty similar in composition to the original foot. Um, uh, these are what I've been using lately. I found a supply of these. They are very similar in shape and they are the same height. No, they're not the same color. No, they're not exactly the same material. Uh, but those are what I found was a, a decent match. There are plenty of hard rubber and plastic feet out there from places like McMaster Car. Um, but uh, that's, what, that's what I've been using. Um, this particular uh, cabinet, I am going to remove these and uh, get out those rivets. Now, getting out these rivets is a bit of a challenge because, well, if you try drilling them, they tend to start spinning, and that doesn't uh, work too well. Um, Dremel tool cutoff wheel I use sometimes. You got to be careful not to gouge into the cabinet itself, or if you've got some really uh, good end nippers. Uh, get them on there and just uh, cut that rivet right out. Once you have it all disassembled out of the cabinet, this is what you will end up with. Can't emphasize this enough. Take lots of reference photos before you start doing any work. Before you even start disassembling it. Things like dress lead matter. I'll talk more about that when I talk about putting it back together. But these little metal bits that stick out like this, they have a purpose. They are to hook the cables through and secure them, keep them out of the way. I think this is a good place to break off the next installment. 
I will take you through a guided tour and explain what all of this is and what all of this does.